Hello everyone, in this seventh lesson of how to make your first game in Unity we are going to take a look at UI as well as updating our UI when we collect a coin. Before we get into it remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload, it really helps me out. Now on with the show. So what is UI? UI is a way of displaying either an image or a text or something to that effect on your screen overlaid whenever you play the game. So for example, our game view currently looks like this and we want to have, let's say, a score update here in the corner whenever we collect a coin. We're going to do that. So there are many different types of UI elements that we can use and they end up all being encompassed in one single object which is known as a canvas. So in order to get all this into place, all we really need to do is establish what our first UI element is going to be. And I would like to have just a little bit of visual imagery on there, just kind of maybe a darker box with the text on top. So what we'll do is we'll go to game object, we can go to the UI menu here and you can see all these different types. So I am going to start with a raw image. Now. One thing to note about this is if we pan our camera around and zoom out, we will see our raw image right there, but you will also notice this big white block. This big white block represents where our screen would be. So these are currently our screen barriers. So if we were to have a screen in portrait mode, these barriers would be much higher and much thinner. So just keep in mind that these do represent the edges of the screen. So if we were to have this box here, we would see it directly in the bottom corner of our game view there. However, if we were to move it somewhere here, although we can still see the full box here, we would not see the full box on our screen there. So if you want to keep your UI in bounds, just make sure it is inside this area. Now another thing to note, we have inserted a raw image as it's known right here, however it doesn't always have to be an image, you could use this to your advantage to create various effects, and that's what we're going to do here. So I am going to change this colour over here in the raw image component, let's turn it to completely black. However, I'm going to play with the alpha now. The alpha is a way of being able to make it either opaque, translucent or transparent. Obviously 255 would make it completely opaque and zero would make it completely transparent. Anything in between gives you some translucency. So I'm going to have this at about 50, I think. So it's very, very see-through. If we take a look now, we can see just how see-through it is. Now we're going to layer another one of these on top with a little edge just to give it a little bit of extra imagery like I say but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this rec tool up here and I'm going to move this into position in the top right so let's pan our screen around bring it over zoom out a little and then we can just drag over here now obviously you can play around with this a little bit more you can refine it with its position uh, its height and width do whatever you need to so we have it in position I'm going to have the height probably keep it 100 for now and have the width as maybe how far should we have this across maybe 300 and then bring it into position about there I think so the next thing we're going to do is actually on the canvas itself now this is a little trick that I've been using for quite a while and I think a lot of people miss this trick out and it's actually very handy to get everything fitting on your UI perfectly so over here you can see where we have canvas scalar. I always like to change my canvas scalar to scale with screen size. And what this will do is it will actually scale to a standard screen size. Now most people when developing they aim for a standard 1080 resolution which would be 1920 by 1080. So it's entirely up to you how you want to work with this but generally if you have your screen resolution or reference resolution as 1920 by 1080, that is a very standard resolution. Obviously in the future, it's going to be a lot higher than that. It'll be 2160 at some point as standard, I would assume. Um, but either way, if we drag this to be 0.5, you can manually enter if you want to. What you have there is a perfect balance of UI always being inside the boundaries on a standard resolution. Now obviously this scales, so if you were to change the resolution to 720 for example, then everything we see here would still scale. 
If we don't set this option, it does mean that things may go a little off screen and look a little crazy. So for now, let's realign this up here because we've set our canvas resolution. And I want to anchor this in the top right. The reason I anchor this in the top right is it means that it cannot move any further if we were to change the resolution. So like I say, if I set that there, let's make this a little longer, maybe about there. And if I go to the game view now, I'm actually able to drag this game view out of here and make it its own object. So imagine if this was our screen, someone had it at this resolution, someone had it at this resolution, someone had it at that resolution. You can see that this box up here always stays relative in size and position because of the way we set this up. It's very, very handy to know that. So let's take our game view back to our scene. And all I've done there is just drag and drop this little tab. So now let's continue with what we're doing. I'm going to hold control and press D to duplicate that raw image, but I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. In fact, before I do that, what am I going to do is standardize the width here. Let's just have that as a standard 500. So I'm going to hold control, press D once again, apologies. And I'm going to reduce the width and the height. So I have a space of 10 between each side. So I'm going to reduce it by 20. So this one is going to be 480 and this one is just going to be 80. And if we look at our game view now, we can see that we have a bit more imagery to this object. Obviously you can go a lot further than that. You could change this raw image color to maybe blue, I guess. And then have a look at the game view and you would see it looks like that. You could change it to green if we wanted. And you can see just how much that does have an impact on what we're creating here. So I actually might have it a very pale yellow. So that is basically a raw image. We could attach an image to it if we wanted to. Um, but for now, all we need to have is just that extra imagery. Let's now work with some text. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's insert a text box. So we can change a couple of things with this text box. Let's move it into position. And you'll notice as I move it, you'll see it snapping with certain lines. What that's doing is it's snapping it to a position relative to other UI objects around it. So at the moment, this text object is dead center of these objects here, which is very handy to know. We can also drag increase the size and you'll see it snap once again to various objects. Now you don't want to have it too close. So I'm going to uncouple it just there and there and probably increase the size there and there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the font style kept as normal. Let's have the font size as 30 and we'll see how that eventually looks. We'll keep line spacing as one rich text ticked. And I think we'll have our alignment kept to the, what should we have? Let's keep it left, but let's have it in the middle about there. And others, what have we got here? We don't need to align it. We don't need overflow because I don't think we're gonna go any further than that. And I think we'll change the color to a nice white. Now, obviously we've got the aerial font here. We could theoretically change the font if we wanted to, and we probably will at some point in this series. For now, all we're concerned about is just getting the text in there and updating whenever we collect a coin. So I think I might increase the font size a little bit more. Let's have 36 and see how that looks. Okay, we'll stick with that. And I'm going to have this say score colon zero. So we can now use that to our advantage. The reason I say that is because we can now create a script to attach to our coins. Well, theoretically, we already have the script that we can just modify. Remember that coin collect script? I think we should modify that. So the way to do this now is if we go into that coin collect script, open up in Visual Studio. Now, what we do need to do is we need to add a namespace in here to deal with any UI elements that we're going to play around with. And we are going to use some UI elements. So that means at the very top, after using Unity Engine, we now need to type using Unity Engine.UI with a semicolon. And what that will do is it will allow the script to reference 
names and elements of the UI in Unity and then play around with them. So all we really need to do at this point is declare another variable, which is going to be that text on screen. And then we need to tell this to update that text whenever we collect a coin. So logically, what we'd need to do is keep count of just how many coins that we have collected. So if we now type in here, public game object, we'll have this as text score semicolon. Next, what we'll have is public, and I'm actually going to type the word static here. The reason I'm having the word static is simply because we have to have this as a script that everything can keep track of. So if we update this once without the word static, it won't be updated in other versions of the script, i.e. other scripts attached on other objects. Now, we are going to do this two different ways in this tutorial, so don't worry if you're not happy with this way, we will do a different way as well, and then you can choose which one you want to stick with. So public, static, and this is also going to be an integer, and we'll call this coin count, semicolon. Now, once we have our tag here, and we have set the game object as false, before we do that, we need to have the text updated with our correct score. So to do that, we would go text score dot get component. And so what we're basically saying here is we are referencing the component, which is inside our text box. And that's going to be text open close bracket dot text and that is a lowercase t there and we are making that equal to and in quotes we'll have the word score just like we typed before space then another quote and then plus that variable coin count semicolon and save the script so all we've done here is we have said that we are going to make this equal to that but there is one vital thing we haven't done here. Have you noticed it? Of course, we haven't actually specified any value for coin count. That's where we also need to add an extra line to add one to coin count every time. So coin count plus equals one, semicolon and save. Obviously this can be any number you want. It could be a hundred per coin. It could be a thousand per coin. It's entirely up to you. But all we've really done is just say, this is our text object. This is our coin count. Here is where to find where to update the text. I'll show you this little section in a minute. And this is what we update it with. So if we head back into Unity and let it compile. And if we click text now, you can see that that is the text component. And that is the text subcomponent that we have just updated, also called text. That's why that works. So next, we'll use that little trick from last time. If we select all of our coins, you'll notice that that text score now appears there. So let's drag and drop text onto there. And now let's press play. And we should see the score update as we collect coins. There's one, two, three, four, and five. So I did say I was going to show you another way. You can stick with that way if you want to. This one involves creating what is known as a global script. So let's right click, create C sharp script, global coins. Now, I do prefer to use global scripts for many different reasons main reason being it gives us a bit of a chance to keep everything in order but i know some people do prefer to create this type of script now all we need to do to make this work is we can still take this using unity engine.ui and place it in global coins in the same namespace and we need to take both of these variables so if we take those two variables and place it here in global coins 
And I think I'm going to get rid of the annotations and void start for now because we do not need them, but we do need the update method. Next, what we need to do is we need to take this line of code, the text score component. Let's take that line out and let's place it in global coins. And finally, we can actually get rid of everything we've copied over in that coin collect script because we don't actually need it there anymore. However, this coin count plus equals min uh, one, sorry, not minus one, um, will still be required with just a little bit of modification. So what's going to happen here is this script is going to talk to global coins. So what we'll do is we'll change this coin count plus equals one, and we'll change it to be global coins dot coin count plus equals one. So what that's doing there is it is adding one to the variable in global coins. So this now works the exact same way. So save all them scripts, head back into Unity. And these coins still have the script on, but they don't have that extra variable. However, what we need to do now is game object, create empty. And that empty game object, we can now attach global coins to. And then we can attach that text box over here and press play. And all of this will work the exact same way as before. There we go. It's just a different setup altogether and everyone prefers something different. So you can go with whatever method you would like. Uh, I figured I would teach both just in case, uh, but I'm gonna go with that second method that we've created. So next tutorial, we are going to go a little bit more in depth with how our game looks and sounds. So we're going to bring in a sound effect when we click on, or rather collect our coin. We might add some background music and we're also going to change our player cube into an actual character. So I hope to see you guys in that next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.